So let's look at relationships with the entity framework. If you've done any relational database programming, you understand that tables can have relationships. They're related to each other. For example, we have videos here, and on my channel I have videos, but I also have playlists, and that's where I store uh, or organize my videos in some sort of organized way. If you haven't noticed, there's playlists, and you watch the videos in those playlists. Anyway, I need a playlist, and I want to store the videos in that playlist. That's done using a foreign key inside a SQL Server. If you don't understand what foreign keys are, I suggest you go take a look at my SQL programming playlist where I talk about foreign keys and those relationships would help help this video go a little bit smoother, but I'll try to fill in the gaps for as we go. I'm going to make a class. I'll call it playlist. Maybe that should be an under, under lowercase, uppercase. Oh, I don't know. Class playlist. And as always, we need a ID, public int ID, get get and set and then a playlist should have a title so public string title uh, get set and I think we're good to go let's let's add one more item here public list nope I want a list generic list control dot to get the context menu up hit enter using system dot collections dot generic if you don't understand lists Go look at my .NET, my C# -sharp collections uh, videos. I talked about that in there. Uh, each playlist will have several videos inside of it, so we're going to have a list of videos. List of video, and we'll say get. Oopsie. Say get and set here or app domain setup. Why not? App to <laughs> set. Thank you. Control K D. Oh, of course, I forgot to put a name on my property. How silly of me. I'll say videos here. So I'll have a list of videos. Each li playlist I'll have a list of videos. And that will be all the videos inside of the playlist. Control KD. That does the formatting for the entire document. And we'll go down here. Let's let's make a video. I'm going to say video. Me video. Gets new video. Uh, title. Gets hello world entity framework work and the description it's going to be man I'm struggling on this keyboard learn the entity framework okay, hopefully we're smart and just skipped over me typing all that stuff in there but we now have a video uh, let's make a playlist let's say playlist me list me playlist. How about that? Playlist. Um, inconsistent there with the lowercase l. Whatever. It's new <laughs> playlist. And inside of this playlist, I'll say me playlist dot videos dot add. I want to add me video. All right, and we also need to give me playlist a title. I guess we don't have to give it a title. We'll talk about. Uh, null constraints later, but for now I'll just say this is the entity framework playlist. Now I'm going to hit Control F5. I'm going to run this and think about what's going to happen inside of our database. What's our schema going to look like here? I, I've instantiated me context. I said database dot delete, so it'll start off with a brand new database, new context, everything. And so when we get done, what's going to happen inside of the program? Pause the video. Think about what our database schema is going to look like. Control F5, build this, run this, and oh, it explodes. Hopefully you were smart enough or quick enough to catch. Hey, a no reference exception. You're trying to say videos.add right here. This blows up because videos is a reference to a list. It's actually an auto-generated property with a, a backing fill in the background. You can look at my automatic property videos if you want to learn more about that. But essentially there's a reference backing this. That's a list of videos. And since list of videos is a reference type and we didn't instantiate that then we get a null reference exception here so maybe you weren't quite expecting that. I'm going to say new list of video uh, and then use this C sharp 3.0 syntax where I can just put this in here and that will call add on list for us. Now I'll run it again. What's the schema going to look like? Control F5, build that, run that. We don't get any errors. Let's go to SQL Server take a peek at what the entity framework did in our database and I'm refreshing and there is no database <laughs> why is there no database? I'll tell you why there's no database because we said delete 
the database and, and we didn't we didn't add any videos to our database. This this context, me context, this is the pipeline that the entity framework manages for us. It's the pipeline from us to the SQL Server Management Studio. Not Management Studio, but SQL Server. And so if, if we just said, hey, delete the database. And by the way, here in object land and C-sharp land, I'm just going to do some stuff and not tell you about it. So if we don't tell the context about it, then we don't get a database. I do want you to witness, though, however, I'm going to control KC, comment that out. I think I'll control KC all of this out. I'm just going to instantiate the DB context, me context, which inherits from DB context. I'm just going to instantiate this. And I want you to pause the video and think, is anything going to happen in SQL Server, the schema set up or anything? Uh, pause the video and then come back and let's see what happens. Control F5, build that, run that, press any key to continue. Wow, that happened awfully fast. Does that tell you anything? Nothing happens. Now watch this. Watch this. I'm going to come here. Let's uncomment this. I'm just going to say, hey, database, uh, in the videos playlist, let's add me video like that and, and then I'll hit control F5 again. Is that going to change anything that happens in SQL Server? Pause the video, think about that. Or wrestle with it on your own. Do it yourself before watching me do it. Control F5. You see it takes a little bit longer for the program to execute at some point in there. Not when we construct the context, but when we actually try to use the context as we did with an add here. The entity framework goes out to SQL Server and, and establishes do we need to create a database? Or is the database already created? Does the schema of the database match the schema defined here by what the user is trying to tell me. Anyway, when we do the dot add, that's when that happens. Or several other things we can do with the DB context add just seems to be the one we're doing right now. Let's go back to SQL Server. I'll uh, refresh our tables here. And you see, oh, we get a my test DB. We can look in there and we get the tables. And we only have the videos table. Again, we'll come back to migration history later, but right now we only have the videos table. Why do we only have the videos table? We made this whole playlist class. Uh, oh, oh, right, right. Jamie said this was the pipeline to the database, and all we said was, hey, we want a DB set of videos. So if I want the playlist to show up, say public DB set playlist playlist get set. Now the playlist object, the playlist class is part of my schema for my entity framework object model and the entity framework will go to the database and say hey oh, we need a playlist table and it's going to store playlist objects which have a title of videos and also an ID let's go well let's see let's let's have five on this see the program runs for a bit and we get an exception that says the model backing the me context context has changed you changed it. You, you added this playlist thing. And when we created the database, we didn't have the playlist thing there. And that's where migrations come in. Again, I'm going to talk about that later. But for now, just to get around that, let's delete our old database. We'll just start fresh, get rid of that error, F5 on this, let it run, and ponder the ponder life. Go over here, and we can refresh on the tables. Refresh. And hey, now we have a playlist table and a videos table. Let's just take a peek at both of those. I'm going to select select oh come on, select splat from video. Somebody was complaining to me that they didn't like me saying splat I like splat, it looks like a paintball that kind of splatted anyway, I've, I've heard that from many developers I'm going to keep saying splat if it drives you nuts uh, that's too bad. From uh, playlists. So I want to look at the videos table I want to look at the playlist table hit a 5, you can see the videos table has the same columns that we saw before in previous videos, title, description, uh, but this is new, playlist ID, and then we have the playlist table which has an ID and a title but nothing else, which makes sense, ID and title, going back to our code, a playlist has an ID and a title, but then how did this, this list of videos get set up? Hopefully if you've, if you've done a fair share of SQL programming, you can catch it quickly, but if you haven't, let's discuss that. We got this playlist ID and, and somehow the NA framework is using that playlist ID to take care of this property for us. So anyway, we'll look at that in the I'll talk about that in more depth in the next video.